Good morning. This is Mark Trotter with Trotter Biotech Solutions. I'll be covering a topic this morning on extractables and leachables, a particular concern in single-use uh, disposable systems. Uh, it, it'll be a, approximately 45 minutes, and I would stand we will have time for question and answers. And thank you for your participation. One of the things we would like, I'd like to do is just give you a short background. I have my uh, master's degree in microbiology and continued on and received my uh, master's in business and finance. Uh, I've been involved in the biopharmaceutical industry for approximately 25 years, working for a variety of companies in and out of academia, and as of recent, have started my own company, Trotter uh, Biotech Solutions. And, uh, I've been kind enough that Hyo and Yaron has invited me to speak this morning on the topic of these extractables and leachables. So why are we here? One of the key things is the personal qualifications. Part of GMP is this Part 211.25 uh, to train in current good manufacturing practices and all have to have on a regular basis some form of training. And this may meet some of your GMP training requirements. If so, uh, please feel free to add uh, to uh, your personal qualification file. So as we get through this, there has always been a little uh, discrepancy or a misunderstanding. What are extractables and what are leachables? Uh, in the very beginning, the terms were used interchangeably whereby extractables was the first term that was uh, used to describe materials that would um, come off, leach off of polymer materials and possibly into drug products. Today, we break difference up. Extractables is more globally similar to that pyrogens um, include all of compounds that cause a fever or fever response in the body. And a subset of that are endotoxins. So if you think of the same analogy, extractables are more globally everything that can possibly come off of a polymeric compounded uh, device or, or system. And extractables are those components that come into your product. So by definition, these are the potential materials that are removed by extreme force, high temperatures, uh, long exposure times, typically at reflux temperatures uh, for upwards of 24 hours under reflux conditions uh, with a condenser. So we gather all the volatile materials. So these polymetric uh, devices uh, may be components of, uh, that are made from polymers, and these may um, extract the monomers and oligomers of that polymer, base polymer. There might be solvents, uh, residual solvents, that are used in the manufacture of the polymer. For instance, filter membranes, uh, the polymer is dissolved in some uh, solvent system and evaporated in forming the uh, filter skin or membrane. Might be additives, such as UV, uh, UV protectorants, hardeners, uh, surfactants, and so forth that may be added to the polymer. Uh, and part of the formulation. And these are also components that may be found uh, as an extractable. Metals, uh, catalysts or other non-organic uh, uh, components may be found in, in, uh, as, as a uh, extractant. Uh, one time aluminum was a concern in the manufacturing processes about 10 uh, or so, or no more, 15 years or so ago. And there was a concern of of uh, various manufacturing processes using aluminum components and uh, the concern that aluminum had in the uh, disease processes known as Alzheimer's. So these are things to 